Rebic, Rafa, tira, gol! Raffaele Leao, oggi segna Leao, la mia giornata è iniziata così, oggi segna... Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Semper <laughs> Milan podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Torgrud, joined uh, by Madison today. Yeah, second intro is the charm with Anthony. Um, <laughs> this week is the first time that we've... Oh no, never mind. We only have one loss. For some reason, I thought we had two. Uh, <laughs> John. Yeah, good to be back, guys. Yeah, John's been out for a while, as everyone could see, though. Ollie's out this week, so um, he's been replaced. He actually is completely free and could be here. He just uh, chose to go to a bar instead. So make sure everyone tweets him some hate. Um, yeah, he left me re with responsibility, and I don't enjoy that. But we're here. We're happy. And, uh, yeah, we'll just dive right in because we have four games to cover. The first one being Porto, the one we're probably going to spend the least amount of time on because it's the least fun to talk about. Uh, we <laughs> lost. <laughs> um Probably out of the Champions League at this point. Lost all three games so far in the group stage. Um, this one was easily our worst performance. The other ones, it seemed like we we might be able to get something mm -hmm. out of it. This one, we just we weren't there. Um, you know, we miss we're missing a lot of players, and we have been for a while. Um, but I, I don't really think that's an excuse for this game. I mean, we we just looked awful, toothless. We had no no medal. We weren't pushing for it at all. And um, yeah, it showed. Eventually, they got us. They had a, a bit of a dodgy goal. It was a good goal. But um, there's a lot of protests for a foul on Benacer right prior to it. Um, I think we all kind of agree it was a foul, but I don't know. Well, back and forth. I think we're a little biased. Foul. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't know. Um, what, what are you guys' thoughts? I don't think either of them were looking at the ball when it happened. Or maybe Benacer was, but whoever fouled him was not. Um, but, I mean, you can't let one foul will decide your fate. Like, you got to play better. So. It's it's a tough one because if, say, for example, it would give away round, then we'd be screaming that it's not a foul. It's a 50-50. Some days it goes your way, some days it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, but we shouldn't be relying on a unvalid goal to get a point out of Porto. Not, that's not discrediting them, but the way that we've been playing this season, especially in the Champions League, because we gave Liverpool a good game on Atletico, um, we shouldn't have put in such a poor performance. And we can only use injuries so many times as an excuse as to why we're not giving good performances. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like you guys said, it, you can't let one moment of refereeing decision dictate if you're going to win, lose, or draw a game. You know, like especially a game like this where we played poorly the entire time. I think their goal came like the, the 67th minute. It, it was decently late in the game. So at that point, like there's plenty of time to have A, gone ahead early, and B, to come back after they scored. And, and we weren't able to do that. So. It was a loss. Um, it was a bad one, but it is what it is. I mean, we deserve to lose. And who who all was missing? We had Teo out, who just recovered, so he'll be back on Tuesday for Torino, um, thankfully. But Brahim's still out. Um, I think, yeah, Kessie's out. Oh, he'll be back for Torino as well on Tuesday. And obviously the big one is Mignon. Um, but yeah, I mean, those, those were most of our attacking outlets and our, our best goalkeepers. So you were always going to be under a lot of fire mm -hmm. when you're missing all those players. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, this just wasn't the game that we could um, get, get get points out of. Should we move on? I mean, I don't, I don't really have much else to say about Porto there. You guys think we're gonna move on in the Champions League? No, I think or our Champions League scopes are third. Over. I I'd hope honestly, not. To be honest, I, I'd rather just get fourth at this point. Yeah, saying like it'd be nice to go to the Europa League, but I just think we've our I think we've got the depth to go and win it, but just for our injury luck, I don't think it's worth even attempting to like with without all our injuries we definitely got the um depth but other than that yeah and, and we'll see it's worth it we'll see on tuesday who who's injured from uh the bologna game i mean samu had to come off hurt um some people were saying tonali might have picked up a knock i think he just gets up because of the yellow card but it looked like people were getting hurt left and right you know rebage is still training individually so um and balatore got got stamped pretty hard we'll get to that earlier or later but yeah, so our injury problem is just too bad, man. I don't, I don't think we should want to continue in the Champions League mm -hmm. if we're not gonna go to the knockout stages. You know, uh, West Ham sure. just scored against Tottenham right now, so that's funny. They're already down. I, I think the issue is like 
we also we don't want to crash out of the Champions League with zero points because that's pretty embarrassing. But yeah, at this point, is it even? You're stuck. Purely stuck. Does he even, does he go for it and try be respectable and risk burning players out just not to qualify anyway, or does he just admit defeat, lose the next three games, but keep it going in the league? It's hard. I it's think really that at, at at this level, you don't just like crash out. I would imagine we're going to at least go all out for the next leg against yeah. Porto because A, we played so embarrassing against them. B, it's at home. We want to put on a good show. It, it, yeah, I, I think we'll do really well against them in the return leg here. We'll have more players back. We could probably pick up the three points, and if that's the case, then then yeah, push forward against Atleti and, and, uh, and Liverpool, but I don't think we're beating either of them. I mean, we could beat Madrid. We show that it's possible, but... I wouldn't count on it. If we get six points, then absolutely go all out and hope that we could beat Liverpool and maybe steal second place. But I don't I, think it's going to happen. The thing is, I just I don't envis- like see us beating Atleti or Liverpool without Manian in net. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I don't see like Liverpool's front three and Atleti's um, front line. They can just they can score for fun as it is, and and it's no disrespect for Tata, but he's just not. A Champions League goalkeeper, so that'd be worrying. Then, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's so, uh, he's a really slow keeper. Like, he's not going to be able to to make the saves necessary. Like, we we saw how much uh, Liverpool was attacking, you know, on us in the first leg. Like, we would have conceded six or seven in that first leg if if Mignon yeah. wasn't in, and then we wouldn't even be talking about having a good performance. We'd be embarrassed by it. So, yeah, I don't like, see us surviving. To be honest, when we're against it, one of our biggest outlets is like the way we can quickly counter. And the guy behind that is Big Mike, who just gets the ball going so quickly from whether it's a goal kick, catching it from a corner, whatever. And without him, it's just, it's, we haven't got a chance. I said pre season that I'd be surprised if we got out of the Champions League group. So my expectations are where they are. Like we've put in two good performances against Liverpool and Athletic that you can be happy with. It's just frustrating that we haven't got a point yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but also, like, this is our first season back in the Champions League. We need, like, two or three before the owners are going to really invest, you know? Because you can't just invest heavy after one season and then yeah. get fifth, you know? Like, then you're financially mm-hmm. fucked. So, yeah, I, think, I agree with that. I think Go the ahead. January transfer window against, like, if, if we, by some miracle, we got through all, we end up going into the Europa League, then the management are going to, and the ownership, they're just going to have to invest in go for the title, go for the Europa League, whatever. We can't be where we were last winter just with a couple of shitty loan signings and not going for it. Yeah, I mean, we're responsible. We're technically in a worse table position than we were at this point last season, but we have more points than we did last season. It's just Napoli doing so well. So, I mean, I do think we've improved even with the the crisis we've had, but yeah, you, you can't expect to get out of out of Champions League in your very first first ever uh outing you're not first ever but you know in, in like seven or eight years however long it's been so you look at inter they still haven't made it out and they've been this is their third season in a row and they just won the those mm-hmm. so you know if they make it out then then i guess that's the blueprint you know we're, we're basically been like a season behind them each year so um maybe this is year we actually get one up over them but yeah champions league probably done um i think we're supposed to do tops and flops for the porto game jan i know you didn't get to see it all so probably not the the best topic for us to cover right now because i don't remember much of the game i was at work betty i think you were as well so um we're just gonna skip that part and on to bologna review we could talk about <laughs> bologna so um just get out of the way maddie you finally get to say it you want to just say who who your flop was real quick um i didn't even watch the game but Ibrahimovic was absolutely a flop. <laughs> yeah, no, he was. He was the worst, and he still made it out with an assist and two goals, technically, but one was an own goal. So, um, yeah, Zlatan looked awful. He looked really bad, man. He was easily his worst game, probably in his career, at least in my opinion, that I've ever seen. I was shocked. It was it was frustrating to watch, to be honest. You know, you, you expect mm-hmm. at least something from him always, and it was just, it wasn't even there. Um, yeah, we, he looked really bad. But to recap the game, 2-0 at half. Um, right after the first goal, Leo had an incredible goal. Zlatan actually assisted on that. So, And then it deflected off Gary Medell from like it, right on the edge of the box into the goal. It looked incredible. Leo was fantastic. We're happy. We're up 1-0. Uh, 
Um, and then they get a red card. I forget the player's name. It was their left center back. Uh, they put it through at the back there. And yeah, so he was sent off. So we're like, all right, cool. Looking great. And then I don't remember the minute, but we got a second goal shortly thereafter. And yeah, 2-0 at, mm-hmm. at half. We're all happy. We're doing great. So it's a good performance. Someone in the chat said you can't stop us. Who was that? I think it was you. What? That doesn't sound like me. That sounds like a <laughs> med. I don't know. Yeah. It could have been me. Um, but yeah, second half starts. And uh, Zlatan scores an own goal from a corner. So you know, <laughs> that set the, the pace pretty well for the second half. Um, and then shortly after that, we conceded again. I don't even remember how that goal came to be, to be honest. And it was just yesterday. I should remember, but I don't. But so, yeah, it was 2-2. At that point, everyone's really confused. It was like the 50th minute. And then they got a second red card um, for a very, very clear stamp on Balatore. So uh, he was sent off, rightfully so, down to, to nine men. But with the way Zlatan was playing, it was like it was 10-10. Um, and that was <laughs> was really difficult for us. And yeah, and then all of a sudden, Benacer gets one. I say all of a sudden, but it was like the 85th minute. Benacer gets a great volley from outside the box to take the lead. And of course, in the 90th minute, Zlatan scores one and, you know, salvages his performance for another week. It was his first start, 40 years old, uh, second goal in the league this season and played the full 90. So there's going to be a lot of people that are going to spin that as a great performance. In fact, I'm sure all the metric websites say it was good just because of the goal and the assist. But yeah, he looked awful. He was really, really bad. Uh, I wanted him to come off. You know, I think everyone wanted him to be subbed off. The only reason he stayed on, I think, was because they were down two men and he was yeah, tall, definitely. put Giroud on, also tall. And the idea was to just put crosses into the box, you know, get the ball in the area and, and do something. And I we didn't all- do that for a while. But then eventually we did. And Giroud had a great header that was saved. And that's when we realized, like, hey, maybe we just keep putting the ball in the area and we'll get it. And it eventually worked. I think also he didn't come off because we didn't really have anyone else on the bench. Like you look at our other attacking options and it's it with Danny Maldini. So you'd rather, even when Ibra's having a bad game, I think you'd still rather have him on when you're chasing, when you need a goal, sorry, than you would Maldini. In yeah, and I get that. Like that that's a, which is a must win. But credit to Zlatan, and I, I was pretty pissed off with his performance, but it says a lot about him getting a goal and assist even when he's playing bad. That's what the top level players do, I guess. Mm-hmm. Even yeah, I mean players. his his mentality never breaks. I mean he's he knows who he is, what he can do, and he's always going to be in until the last second, as we saw, ninetieth minute goal. So, yeah, I mean, like if it was me playing on there and I'm having that game, I'd almost request to be subbed off. Like I'm playing against the team at this point. Let's let's get me out of there. But yeah, that's uh, never something Zlatan's going to do. So at least props to him for that to pull through it. Um. What do we think about our fatigue? Did we look tired? Is it the injuries? Is it the the workload? What do you guys think? I definitely think we look tired and the, without making an excuse for it, but the injuries are taking its toll because now it's the same players having to play week in, week out, sometimes twice a week, full 90 minutes, and it will take its toll. So the international break needs to hurry up, but the only trouble with our players putting in such good performances, these players are now going to get called up for the national teams and it's just going to be a vicious cycle until after Christmas when we get a little winter break where the players can have a proper rest. I think it's going to be after February because in January we lose Benacer and Kessier for yeah, half mm-hmm. gone. Yeah, but it's going to be a rough run. But Tonali, I, I feel like at the beginning of the season, I was way more worried about that month, but the way that Tonali has been playing will be fun. Yeah, I think Tonali has been fantastic. Bakayoko still looking shaky. I mean, obviously, he just came back from injury. Right. So his He's season played like 40 minutes this now. season. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll cut him a little bit of a break, but he needs to step up. He does, but then fair play to him yesterday. Like He kind of created that Benacer goal out of nothing. Like The little dribble he did, taking it to the byline and then putting a dangerous ball in, which the defender had to clear. Like He hasn't got... I'm not saying he deserves loads of credit for it, but he deserves a bit more than what he's got because he, yeah. he did kind of just create that. Played a role. Thing. Yeah, played a role. Yeah, uh, I mean, look, we, we saw what he did his uh, last stint with us, and he started shaky then, and then it was fantastic for the season. Granted, he hasn't had a good season since then, but you know, maybe it just he needs another half season to get going, and then he'll he'll take off, and we'll be good in January. Do we have him on a two year loan or one year loan? Two year loan. Sweet. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, Chelsea extended him for two years and then loaned him to us for two years. So he has three on his Chelsea. Yeah, it's a two-year loan with option, I think. So it's okay. I don't know. I we'll see if we take him up on that. I doubt we do. I think it's too high of a it's price, to be honest. Been three months. No, nah, it's what fifteen. I don't right. remember. I just know for a player with one year left on the contract, it's it's not the Maldini yeah, way. <laughs> They'll let him we, rot. We, we cried at Lucas Bilia for twenty two million, and he was actually a decent midfielder in Serie A at that point with Viola. So I don't know if Bakayoko cut fifteen is going to be worth it. But time will tell in two years. But I'd like to think we've moved past that, and Adley and Pobega are more important for us that we don't need to renew. That's true. Pobega so. scored. Uh... A couple goals, didn't he, this weekend? I know he got at least one. He scored one, but I think he scored two already this season. He's That's what well. it is, yeah. And then Adelie's, of course, killing it. And, you know, um, Favre, Favre, whatever that guy's name? Favre. Favre, yeah, sure. I don't know, whatever his name is. Um, he's killing it. He scored two. So, you know, if we get him in January, that'd be nice. That'll help our right wing. Yeah, well, let's talk about the right wing. Because uh, Samu came on and had a great game to save us against Verona. And then he didn't do too hot against Porto, but he only played a little bit, right? Or did he start? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, no, he, just, no yeah. he didn't play he's, against Porto. He's not in the... Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's not league even league. in the Champions League lineup. Yeah. Um, but then he started this game and looked decent. Not great, not bad. But then got hurt and he came off. And then Salmakers has been, to be honest, pretty poor since his renewal. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I hate yeah, to see good. that, but, you know. It is what it I is. That kind of happens, though. Like after con- after players sign a new contract, they have a small dip. Yeah, I think he's also had like a little injury in this since the season's begun. On the end, I think fatigue might just be taking its toll with him. Mm-hmm. But he has been very poor. Well, yeah, he's played just about every single years. game. So I mean, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if he just kind of needs a little break. Do we have anyone who's played every minute of every game? Not this season. No. I think the closest is tomorrow. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'd say he's probably the closest, but I don't think he has played every minute. Yeah, I think normally did he not? Messier, but... He would have if he came if he didn't come off against Porto. I think no. No, because there's been game, games that we started Romagnoli over him. So, yeah, I but I think it was Romagnoli and Tamori. I don't think he. I don't think yeah. it's been Romagnoli here yet. No, I thought no. it had. Maybe it Are has. Talking... I don't know. I'm sure someone in the comment section will tell us. They'll correct us. Yeah. Oh, what were you saying, John? At us. Like, can we talk about Kia? Because I haven't been impressed with him lately. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know why. Maybe I've just been... Uh, he set such a high standard like, since he's joined. Yeah. And I feel like his performances have been a bit subpar. Um, they were a couple of times yesterday where he were caught out of position and Bologna got in behind. Um, I just don't know. I just, I'm not thrilled about his performances. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to fault him for this, but he did um, make a slide challenge and miss the ball, which led to Bologna's second goal for the equalizer. So, you know, he, I guess you could be like, "Oh, you should have done better there." But um, his renewal is almost done. He should be renewed soon. In fact, I, I think we're renewing most all the veteran players at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, they should all be done by by <sighs> January December. Um, I think here Romagnoli, um, and there is two other people that were in talks to be done. By by December, um, and then guess he's still up in the air. We don't know what's going on with that, but we'll see. Uh, real quick before we move on, I think he will. I think he will. Um, tops and flops. Um, I know Maddie. You already said Zlatan. I is a flop. I'm going to say he's also a flop. Um, who's your flop, John? Um, I'm going to say either Zlatan or Tenali. I don't think Tenali, Tenali had that good of a game in the first yeah. half. I mean, he came uh, off at halftime, so that alone tells you yeah, yeah. wasn't doing too hot. I just, um, it, I'll say Tenali just so it's a bit different than Ibra. Yeah, but fair enough. Ibra's probably there too. Yeah. All right. Who was your guys' top? I did not watch the game, so I will not partake in this part. Fair enough. Um, Rafa, I think it's just pretty pretty steady. Balotelli had quite a good game. Not fantastic, but he had a solid enough game. He wasn't horrendous like he has been the past few times he's played, but yeah, layout's probably my top. Yeah, I will say Balotelli looked better. This was probably his best game. I'm still not sold on him. In fact, I'm still leaning against him. Um, I, I just think he's our weakest link, and it's 
not fair to him, but Teo is so important and so powerful in, in the aspect of his game that, you know, when he's not there, you, you just notice it more than, say, a Kalulu for Calabria or, so, or someone else, you know? But, yeah, um, I think go ahead. The issue with Toure is I don't think he's necessarily a bad player. I think we've just got such high expectations of Teo that yeah. he's never going to live up to them. So we automatically just diminish him before he's even started. A bit like we do with Tata, but he deserves it a lot more. But he doesn't even get a fair chance, doesn't Toure? Because we expect a goal from left back every other game or an assist, and he's just not that type of player. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I'm going to – I don't want to copy with Liao, but I think it is the Liao show. I mean, mm-hmm. I said that pregame. I said it was going to be the Liao's Latin show. And it was Latin for the opposite reason, but Liao for good ones. Um, yeah, I mean, his goal is fantastic. I don't care. He took a deflection. It was still incredible. He he uh, he took the shot. So I'm going to count it for him. Oh, it, it was his, right? It wasn't an own goal. It counted? No, no. It's being counted as his. <clears throat> okay, cool. All right. So that covers all of those games. The next one we have is the Torino preview. Um, let's see, let me just pull up Torino stats real quick. Their start of the season has been very Torino esque. Nothing yeah, special, nothing there. bad. Yeah, they're in twelfth on eleven points. Um, three wins, two draws, four defeats. They only scored twelve goals, conceded ten. I mean, they're they haven't been a good side. They never have been. But they've only conceded ten goals. Yeah, I that's mean that's not, we've only conceded nine. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess that's true. Napoli's only conceded three. But yeah, pretty cool. I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at like, it's just because they, they don't score a lot of goals, you know? Because looking at it, three of their goals came against Genoa. They got a 1 0 win against Sessuolo and a 4 0 win against Salernitana. Anytime they played a real team, Lazio, Juve, Napoli, they've lost or drawn. So, mm-hmm. and Atalanta. Yeah, I mean, they're, Torino's not a threat. Belotti's their best player. He's not going to do much because he's he's probably leaving on a free at the end of the season. Two goals. I, I just, yeah, I think he'll go to come to us, to be honest. I just don't see anything that Torino's going to do to bother us. You know, I mean, that the key player is Belotti. That, that, that's it. Um, I don't, do they have an injury crisis going on as, as well, or is that just us? <laughs> I'm checking right now. Uh, Marco Piacca's out. Simone Verdi's out. Mandragora is out and and Saldi. I mean, those are probably their biggest biggest players to have out, you know. But yeah, I, I think Ivan Yurk is a good coach, but I'm I'm not worried about this at all. I think we're gonna crush him, to be honest with you, just to make it quick and simple. I think this will be a 3 0, 4 0 win. We're gonna have Teo back, we're gonna have Kessie back. Um Zlatan's not gonna drop back to back stinkers. There's no way. We got Liao still, so I think it's actually going to be a walk in the park like last season 7-0. This one won't be as good, but it'll be simple. I think we're going to crush them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we'll crush them. Um, I think it's going to start out slow, but I think we'll come out on top as long as Ebra's yeah. not playing. Uh, I just don't trust us to keep a clean sheet. That is, at the moment, I, I really just don't trust us keeping one with Tatar in net. No disrespect to him, but I feel like any kind of shot that goes towards goal, I'm worried about. Whereas before with Magnan and you know the snake, you feel felt kind of comfortable, and you know and it takes something big to beat them. Um, so I'd say two one maybe three two. I think there'll be goals in the game. I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet either, but I think it's going to be a two one game. Given how defense, I mean, they, if they've only conceded ten goals, they clearly are doing something right on defense. You know. Yeah. Um, but they're also not scoring. So, yeah, I'm like, like well, both of you guys said Tato Rashani guarantees one goal conceded a game. I mean, has he kept a clean sheet in his Milan career? I, I genuinely don't know. I'm sure someone will say he has. In fact, yeah, I think I've been yeah, yelled he, at because I said he had in the past, but <clears throat> most of the time he doesn't. I mean, you'll get the last two games or last three games, he's conceded a, five goals in three games here. Um, the Roma game bef- before that last season, he conceded three. Like, uh, I just don't think he's going to stop much. Um, but I don't know. I don't think, I just don't think Torino's that good. 
if if he's gonna get a clean sheet, it's this is the game for it. But I, I still want to count on it. So yeah, I'm gonna go three one four one. I, I don't think they're gonna put a lot past us because I don't, I just don't think they're there, a good team. But it'll be I don't know. There'll be goals, but most of them will be ours. <clears throat> and that's, I, mean, I think we'll win two one. Yeah. Yeah. What we'll do we think our uh, What do we think our lineup's gonna be? Obviously Tata and goal. Um. Or yeah, and goal, and then. Calabria, Tomori, Kier, uh, Taylor will be back. Kessie will be back. Probably Benacer with them to keep Tonali since he's on the yellows. Um, and then do we think Sam was going to come back or if, if he's hurt, give it yeah. back to Sally? He's in Sally's coast. Looked like he could be out for a while. Oh, is that what they're saying? Yeah. Well, his Instagram post said he'll be back stronger soon or something like that. So okay. I've got a feeling he could be out for a few weeks. Yeah. Um, I think Lulu might start, give Calabria a rest, same with Romagnoli. I'm expecting him to start. I think I can see there being a few changes, but not masses. Maybe That's Maldini true, it is midweek. Yeah, I think Maldini same will. Because with... Kroonich started midweek, or I mean, over, uh, on the weekend, and we still don't have Raheem, so I think it'll be Maldini, just to give him rest a bit. Because Kroonich, I mean, no, Kroonich came Raheem off. Kroonich got subbed off, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, and I don't. Back. I don't think there is. Games in two days. I mean, it, it could probably met the bench. It, I suppose it depends how well he's kept his fitness up. Yeah. Like, yeah. I guess we don't know. Back. Was he asymptomatic or did he actually get sick? Okay. I think he was actually sick, right? Asymptomatic no means you're sick. Well, asymptomatic means, means you don't, don't have, have any symptoms. symptoms. Yeah. Yeah, but you're I mean, still sick. Yes, but I'm, I'm saying like he's not beat up, fatigued. Like I was asymptomatic, okay. I was fine. I, I went to the gym the day I was cleared. Um, but you know, some people uh, th- they get hurt. So yeah, I don't. I don't think Brahim will be back. I mean, he might heal tomorrow and then maybe get caught up, but I don't see it happening. I think he'll be out no matter what. Um, and then left wing's going to be Leo Rebic still out, so that's great. And then four one for uh, n- sorry. Really? Wow. So Lazio's yeah, in the gutter. Again, a fourth goal. Jeez, good for <laughs> him. He's good scored him. all four. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Sorry, I just saw. You're, you're good. Um, I think Zlatan's prob. Well, no, it'll it'll probably be Giroud who starts. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah just because so, Zlatan too. played the ninety, but he'll probably come back on around the hour mark and and look better or something. I don't know. We'll see. But um, we all sent our predictions there, so <laughs> easy. Peasy, and then we have the weekend Roma. game. Roma. This one's going to be tough because uh, Tata's still in goal, and Roma oh. could actually attack. Oh, yeah, Roma but they've also week, looked. Yeah. They haven't looked great. Their past, like the past couple of weeks. I always. They really also got destroyed midweek. Six yes. to one. This. That's very true. They did. Um, you know. I always worry about a Mourinho side that's got a point to prove or that, you know, that need to a big performance. Hopefully that comes today against Napoli. But if they lose to Napoli, then I think they'll be out for blood midweek and on the weekend. So I'm, I'm a bit worried about that game. Um, well, they, they have two games before players. us. They they have Napoli today, yeah, uh, later, and then they have Cagliari midweek on Wednesday. Yeah, Is that so, away I mean, or home? Uh, away. Well, so that's traveling and all. No, fair enough. Yeah, they play, we play, play at, at Roma, so that'll be tough. But I yeah, I mean, I, I get that. A Mourinho side is definitely going to always have a chance. And mm-hmm. I would hedge a bet that the Bodo goalkeeper is better than Tata Rushanu. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I think we're in trouble there. Um, Will Rebic be back by then? Do, do, do we know? Uh, it's tentative. So. He's still trained individually today, so I guess I mean, we'll, we'll find out later in the week. At, at least he's training. Yeah, so that's like, true. That's a good, good sign. Um, yeah. I think if Rebic plays, we have a better chance at winning because him and Liao up top just like feed off each other. Yeah, they have done really well this season. In fact, significantly better than our other anyone else goal scores. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think that. It's it's gonna be tough, but hopefully Brahim's back by then. And yeah, yeah. having Kessie and Teo back today, like that's a huge boost. That's so important for us. So 
I think we could pull it off, but it's it's one of those games where we're gonna need three or four goals to win. Plain and simple. Yeah, There's no way we keep a clean sheet. I suppose there's never a right time to get injuries, but if you look at our fixtures that we've had, we've kind of been fortunate the injuries have come now as opposed to next week where you've got Roma followed by Porto, then you've got the Derby. So if mm-hmm. them players are coming back for them games, that's more of a boost for us as opposed to losing in them games. So Right. I yeah, just I guess that's a plus. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks that Mignon's gonna still be out for the the Derby, and that scares me, but it is what it is. We'll get to that next month, I guess. Um, all right, predictions. I'll say two-two draw. One-one mm. one. or two-one Roma. Oh, mm. um, I'm well. Okay, let me take a look real quick at their. Uh, I mean, they've only conceded nine goals, so their defense is solid. It's a Mourinho side. We know that. But then again, they also conceded six against Bodo, so maybe it's <laughs> collapsing. Um, but they scored 16. Jeez. It's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. I'm going to say 2-2 or 3-2 us. If we could score goals, and I know we can, especially with the boys coming back, if Brahim's back, then I think we have a good chance of winning. Without him, it might be a little tough. Um, I don't know what they're so it, it's tough doing the games like the previews that are later just because you don't know exactly like injury stuff like that. But um, just taking a look at their squad as far as their injuries, you see Chris Smalling's out, which isn't a big deal for anyone. Spinetzel is out, which is kind of like whatever. Um, and yeah, the rest of their team's fit. So they're, they're, they're not going to have any issues with their selection. They're going to be able to field the best 11 that they can. Mm-hmm. And that scares me. Um. Yeah. So that's a that's a toughie, boys. But we'll make it happen. Um. Ollie said to cover rumors next, but I don't know what rumors are because he didn't tell me, and I woke up about ten minutes before we started recording, so I didn't check. But what we can do is go to our listener questions, and hopefully we have some because uh, we didn't have any questions uh, when I checked at uh, the beginning. So. Give me a second here. Let me pull it up. And all right, we got a decent amount. We got a couple. <laughs> um, shout out to Bart because Bart, you asked five of the six questions. So I appreciate you coming in clutch for us. I'm just going to read them all, and I haven't read any yet. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But first question from at the Milan fan. Uh, should Milan still try and make a run in the Champions League or completely give up on that and solely focus on Serie A? We actually covered that um, in pod, so I think you got your answer <laughs> earlier there. But yeah, if, if we could pull out a win, then then push forward. If not, just uh, go for fourth. Uh, the terrible performance against Porto was due to Pioli having a trim squad or him and the players having inexperience in the Champions League? That's actually a good well, question. And and yeah, I mean, we, we touched on it, but not directly. Um, I think it was injuries, fatigue. Um, I mean, the squad's an experience, but it's not like it's not like they can't do it. We saw how they could perform against Atletico and and yeah, Liverpool. So, Liverpool. yeah, we have I, it in I, us. I think we were just exhausted. Yeah. I mean, I think that the inexperience shows for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but like we we were never going to make a run in the tournament. Yeah. You know, and I think we all kind of thought that going into it anyways, you know, right. we, we thought getting out of the group stage would be impressive. And here we are kind of falling into what we thought was going to happen, which is not. Um, yeah, it's it's just a question of do we get fourth or do we get Europa League, I think. And I'd if those are my options, I'd rather fourth. Yeah, I, I think, think we like that option because it helped enter last season. But from a business standpoint, they want Europa League because it's more. Right. Like- yeah. I think the um, the issue is we would have expected that part of result more if we didn't put in such good performances against Liverpool mm-hmm. and Atletico. Like we know what we're capable of, and saying that mm-hmm. we're inexperienced is fair enough. But to put in two great performances against arguably two of the best sides in Europe, to then putting in a disaster class against a Portuguese side, which no disrespect to them or anything, but it's still not Liverpool or Atletico. I think that's what are not is more annoying and. Yeah, their injuries you can maybe use an excuse to a certain extent, but the inexperience, 
I don't think you need experience to win football matches. You just need good performances, and we were lacking. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, at the start of the season when we saw the group, we all said if we could edge a result against Liverpool or Atletico and then we get our, the six points against Porto, I mean, we all thought we were going to get six points against Porto or at least push forward and, and make it close. I mean, I guess a 1-0 loss is a close <laughs> game, but the performance was not enough to say it was close or anything like that. So, right. yeah. Um, next question. This one's also from Bart still. Pioli still hasn't figured out on whom to replace Brahim with when he's not available. Who do you think should he try in that role? The option used till now were ineffective. Um, I mean, the problem is he's used every option that he has. Krunic and Maldini. <laughs> that's, that's one or the other. So I think we got to um, try Tonali there. Yeah. I'd be interested to see Tonali there or even um, Alexis <laughs> in that number 10 role. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's a fairly decent pass through the ball and his work rates up there to be good enough to fill that role. It's maybe just his creativity that's lacking a bit, but I think he's got more creativity than someone like Krunic has. No disrespect to Rade, but I'd be interested to see him there. Start doing yeah, up Rebic top there. with Rebic in the middle. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I'm probably going to get shit on for this one, but what do you guys think about Zlatan being in the 10? I know he's slow, but, yeah. I mean, he's still... Okay, no one wants to hear about Do you want him to get injured? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. mean, I think he's still the most creative player that we have as far as, like, what he could do. Yeah, Just but pull that something out of nothing. is way above I his think... grade right now. Yeah, that's he's probably got true. the footballing brain to do it, but I just don't think his legs have yeah. got it in him anymore. I think it's just better off doing what he's doing, just roaming around the pitch. Well, the main reason I suggested is, I mean, we see him drop back. He's playing so much deeper. He is creating more. So if we just establish him there, and then we could do the Ravage Liao up top, or we or we do Giroud up top, like then at least on set pieces, we have two really big, tall, strong strikers in the box already. You know, I, I think it it might be worth looking into, but it's not the solution at least until January, and we have a chance to, to get someone else in. Because I think we're realizing that we do need another person that if mm-hmm. Brahim goes down, we're, we're in a tough spot, and we're seeing that right now. Um, all righty, after that, and this one's about Zlatan, so that's funny. Um, after, after watching how ineffective Zlatan was against Bologna, misplaced passes, lazy runs, not fighting for the ball, etc., how should Pioli deploy him to get the most out of him? Oh, that's kind of what we just actually were talking about. I mean, you deploy him as striker. I know I just made an argument for not, but that's where you put him. That's nothing you could do, you know? Right. Throw him up top, and everyone's allowed a stinker. He's played, you know, almost a thousand games in his career. He, he's allowed a stinker, but he has more good games the, than bad. The way that we play just isn't suited for him anymore. Like, we need young, not necessarily young, just fast footballers to execute the press um play, players that can run in behind for the through balls like Zlatan his pace is getting slower and slower as mm-hmm. match days go on and that's no fault of his own he's just getting older now so I think you've just got to deploy him in the big games where you maybe just need a bit of hold up play or if you're chasing a goal just put him in the box and pump the ball into him I think it's hard to justify starting him now yeah I mean you look at like Last season, how he played, he was a lot faster, a lot more active. Like he was making runs in this season. Granted, we've we've seen him in one start and three games total for a combined like eighty five minutes. You know, so I don't know, but but he's not playing the same way. He's sitting back more. He's he's slower. He's uh, not moving as much. And maybe that's still he's just recovering from injury, or he's a bit tentative because of his injury. But I don't know. I think we'll see more from him. Later on in the season, I think we'll get at least remotely back to form. Um, but we're, we're never going to get this last in a bowl. Standard. I hope not. <laughs> I think our best front three is Sally, Diaz, Leao, and Rebic. And going forward, that should be our front, uh, best four. Sorry. Yeah. That should be who it is. And that's we play our best football with them four on the pitch because they can all kind of move over across the four positions. They can swap with each other mm-hmm. it's probably the best football that we play when they're on the pitch and no disrespect to either or she rude but our football isn't as good to watch 
or as effective when one of them two was starting. Yeah, I mean, we had a strike partnership yesterday with a combined age of 75. Like, <laughs> that should never be a stat in any game, you know? Like, it's <laughs> ridiculous, but it's where we're at. So um, we need a new striker in January, not to replace Ibra, but to replace him when he's gone, you know? I think he's, he's still going to be playing a, a big role this season at the very least and um i think there were talks of a renewal i don't know if that's the right thing and i think he could kind of see that as well especially if he gets hurt again this season but yeah we need a new striker for next year at the very least and we should do that in january all right next one how concerning is is it that milan's levels drop dramatically when two to three starters are unavailable meaning the depth on the bench is not good enough the problem is the depth on the bench is also hurt so now we're getting into what we had last season, which was the no depth players, the players that, mm-hmm. that aren't very good. Those are the ones that are playing right now because our depth is hurt and our starters are hurt. And the positions that are getting hurt, Brahim, Teo, those are positions that our depth is a little thin on. And they're just some of the most important, most critical players on our team. Without Teo, Balatori is not going to play the same. There's no other left back in the world that's playing the way Teo does. And our system is so reliant on his runs that it's always going to be a glaring hole. Same with Brahim. We don't have another like set in stone playmaker to take that role besides Maldini, who's no disrespect to him, but he's 20 and he's had like four games in his career. You know, he, he's like, he's not going to be able to do what Brahim does. And Krunic, he, he could be shoehorned in there and he could do a job, but that's not his natural position. He's not going to do what he could do there. So yeah, I mean, we do need more depth, but I don't know. I, I think the way to go about depth is to try and get someone that's on par as your starters or better than that way you're not replacing depth with more kind of whatever players you're replacing starters with more starters. And then you have multiple starters, you know, and you have a better team. I think any team, even with the best depth, when you lose four or five key players, not starters like key players as in Magnon, um, Kessie, Teo, Brahim, it's, you're always going to struggle. Like even if you have got, good players capable of starting matches on the bench when you take away your stars that is when you struggle in football and that's what's happened it's not like we've just lost you know Calabria and we can replace him with someone as good as or just a bit under with Lulu like these are the players that change the matches for us and when you take that out of any team they struggle anything you want to add Manny? no he's completely right yeah yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to say besides that. Um, all right, this is the only other question we have, and it's the only one not by Bart. So shout out, Bart. You uh, you carried this section. Um, <laughs> this one is from the Magnifico 5. And I'll be honest, I don't quite understand what it's being <laughs> asked. It said, Milan Michael Jackson wake up from the dead when Balatori finally finds a cross? Question mark. Um, Read that again? <laughs> <laughs> Milan Michael Jackson wake up from the dead when Balotori finally finds a cross. I think Is he's just a statement it, or a question. Uh, I mean, there's a question mark at the end. I think he's just kind of saying like, we all looked, looked looked dead. We weren't doing anything, and then finally Bal found a cross, and, and we looked a bit better. And I guess that's true. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't think Balotori was that great, but John said he, he was for the most part. You know, he did have some involvement in the goals. So it's not the craziest thing. Um, yeah, it's important, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know. And I apologize. I'm, I'm probably not understanding the question very well, but I don't understand it at all. Yeah. I don't but, understand it. Sorry. Yeah. He brought up Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think he was just making a joke, okay. but yeah. Um, let me just double check real quick. Make sure I'll refresh and see if we got, Anything else? And no, that was all the questions. I apologize. I didn't put the question tweet out soon enough. I guess I waited a little too late. Um, but yeah, that can we that, get Oliver back? Get the real host. Yeah, yeah, he should Where's be back next in? week. Um, I don't know. Our schedule seems to be changing a lot lately, but we will figure something out soon. Uh, Where closing thoughts, anyone? We are going to be um, by the winter break in the league um let me just take a quick because our last we have roma um we have the derby 
Who else did we play? Fiorentina. We don't have, well, I guess we have Napoli late December. That nap. I think in the winter we're going to be in second place still. So. You think so? Yeah. It depends, I guess, uh, on other results, to be honest with you, because I don't think we're going to beat Inter in current form. Um, not with Mignon out. No, and but I like that game is Napoli. always a little crazy. Yeah, form, but I just. Form goes out the window in the Derby. But unfortunately, so does Tato Rushanu. He's just not good enough. Yeah, I think that's going to be our biggest hindrance going forward. But depending on how Inter do outside of that game against us, depending on Napoli do outside of their game against us, um, I think we could be second or third. Maybe first yeah. if we could pull some crazy stuff off. Maybe Mike gets back sooner than expected. I don't know. But yeah, I'm thinking second or third. Maddie, what do you think? I said second. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, John, what do you think? Uh, third. Yeah. I think I, without Magnani, it's going to be really tough. Yeah, once he gets back, we're, we'll be in good shape. It's tough because right after... This is the first season that the um, second half of the season doesn't mirror the first half. So we actually play Roma immediately in January again to start off the second half of the season. So that's going to be rough if uh, we still have injuries. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I think that covers everything. We good? You're the host. I, well, I'm just asking if you guys have anything else you want. All right, I guess we're good then. So thank you guys for listening. I've been your host, Anthony Torgard. Um, my Twitter name's right there. You can see it. Torgard45. Maddie, sign off. Right there. <laughs> and Gian? Yeah, pleasure to be back. I'll see you all soon. Yeah, good to have you back. Thanks for joining us. You've been out for a while, but um, hopefully, hopefully the first of many to return. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. We'll catch you. In Ante, ecco l'Ante Ante in area di rigore, Ante Ante, Ante Ante, Ibra, gol! Vediamo se è buono, ce l'ho da buono, ce l'ho da buono, ce l'ho da buono!